Well, it's getting cold again in Wisconsin, and I start building fires in my, my wood stove. I like to run my Sterling engines on the wood stove. Uh, this here is the Beer Bottle 2 engine. It's going to be, it's on its third season now. One of the things I did when I made it was I made two displacers. One that was just a standard, one of my paper displacers that was a hollow one, but then I filled it with popcorn just as a test. And actually it's worked very well. Um, imagine at this point the popcorn is just a kind of an airy carbon layer on the bottom of the bottom of the displacer. Then I also made a balsa, a hollow balsa wood displacer that I wanted to try, that I was going to try when this stopped working, but it never stopped working. So what I'm going to do is wreck my perfectly functional engine and uh, try my other displacer for this season. To do that, I'm going to take these springs off, which aren't really even necessary, but it's more of a safety precaution because the the silicone will hold the bottom. Oh, well, I guess it is necessary then. You can see it's kind of puffed a bit on the bottom and changed shape. Because uh, I also layer the bottom with uh, aluminum foil to protect it from the heat a little bit. Because in this case it's cotton paper. In this case it's balsa, and then wrapped in cotton paper, as you can see here. I'll show some slides of how I made this in a little bit. So here, I just need to, basically, I can just slip down out of its attachment here. And out comes the popcorn filled displacer. I think about that much as popcorn now, kind of shrunk over time. It's very brittle. Interesting. Quite a bit of weight difference, obviously. Balls is going to be heavier than a hollow cylinder with just some pieces of popcorn in it. I'm continuing to make my balsa displacer um, to replace the popcorn one. What I've done is I've cut out several thick pieces of balsa and I've cut out some chambers to reduce, to reduce their weight. They'll stack up. I'll, I'll kind of alternate the, uh, the layers to you know, give them a little more strength. The, the bottoms will be uh, solid pieces. Once again, this is to make it so the balsa or the displacer is actually airtight and structurally sound so that uh, we can get maybe a little more force out of the engine. Um, I'm going to separate and break up the interior chambers with just some of the cotton paper. We'll just kind of stack it up right like that. Glue it all together. For the gluing, I'm just going to use wood glue. It's not, you know, overly heat tolerant, but uh, balsa is a pretty good insulator, so. I don't think it's going to be an issue. The glue itself shouldn't get too hot. Now that's going to come out a hair taller than my plan. So once I have it all glued together, I drill my uh, hole for the uh, music wire or the displacer shaft. I'll just uh, cut off the bottom to the right height. That should still give me enough layer to uh, give the bottom some structure and strength. Okay, at this point, I've sanded it off. My intent is to uh, put a small thin layer of silicone all the way around it and I'm going to wrap it around with a uh, the cotton paper to make it look a little nicer. Bake it up and see how it turns out. Wrap it around here. See if we can't tighten things up. Ran into a small problem. The shaft I had in this cylinder was the wrong size. It was too big. So since I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the one off of here um, and uh, reuse it. So since I'm gonna do that, and because things are in kind of a bad state anyway, I'm gonna just take a look at what's inside here. Uh, what happened to that popcorn? I am curious. That's not going to come out that easy. So, as we can see, popcorn 
fused into kind of a, a burnt carbon layer, very light, and the top just kind of was insulated by that bottom layer of carbon, obviously, and uh, didn't burn. So there was still a lot of fill inside my hollow, hollow displacer. So now I'm going to clean this up. One of the biggest things that run into uh, you run into problems with with the Stirling engines is uh, you get a lot of buildup on the on the shaft. You get friction there. The other place you get a lot of buildup is in the piston. You got to always, you know, a couple times a year clean off that piston to keep it running. Where this one uh, ends up being a little more reliably on the running side, just because there is no piston. And once again, I didn't think this bellow would last that long either, but it's working fine. So I've got it in there. It seems to be holding all right. Used a little JB quick weld. So just feed her through. And, uh, Oh, there it is. And we need to hold it up while we do the silicone portion. So I'll just put this in here. I could wait till after. Basically, I'm just going to put a small bead around the side. We don't want too much. You know, like many things, more is less. I'm just going to put it down on my plate here. I'm not going to spring it in place. So if it's too tight, it's going to squeeze all the silicone out, and then we won't have any, won't have as good of a seal. So I'm just going to set it in there, wiggle it back and forth, so that we try not to squeeze it all out. Well, our first run with the new displacer. <laughs> Looks like it's either hitting the bottom or the top, or maybe one of the sides. It's, it doesn't line up quite perfect. Maybe it'll work its way out as it runs a bit kind of see it wiggling as it goes up and down. Um, it's quite a bit heavier too and it's running at under 200 degrees. So, I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, here. It might run for a little bit. That's kind of the lower end that you'd normally see these guys run at. Oh, I decided to pull out all my models, my engine models. Uh, here we got the, uh, let's see, what do we got? The Phoenix engine, the Christmas engine, the beer bottle 2 engine, the copper top engine, and the original beer bottle engine. Which, that one, these two, it's got to be the fourth year for those running. But um, this one is running a bit slow. i got to pull it out and clear the clean the piston off. It's a little gummed up. So it's sticking a bit. Maybe it just needs better contact with the surface to go on. But um, the new displacer is working quite well. It's tapping a little bit on the bottom. A little adjustment, I think, will be fine. It's already quieted down quite a bit. Uh, there were some concerns with it being so much heavier, but when you figure it pulls itself down, that same momentum should wrap around to pull itself back up most of the way. So it doesn't really end up costing you that much. Obviously, typically, I only have one engine on here. Not sure my wife would go for that. See, it's kind of sticking occasionally as it's running and then starts back up. That's that's just the way it behaves when there's a, a film or a gum on the uh, shaft or the piston. They've been in the cupboard all summer, and they all seem to be working, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching.